Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mark Petock, Chief Marketing and Communication Officer here at LinkSpring. Joining me today is my colleague, Robert Hirsch, Chief Technical Officer. We will be recording this presentation and it will be made available for viewing post today. If you have any questions, please uh, utilize the chat function of the platform here. And I, we hope uh, everybody is staying safe and everybody is well. And so let's go ahead and get started. So today's subject is the continued movement to the enabled edge. More deployments involving distributed connectivity and IP devices at the edge is impacting our building environments, whether it be the equipment, single facility, or multi-sites. Connectivity and data are going to the edge. In fact, they are currently at the edge. The rise of IP has contributed to the distribution and disruption of the building infrastructure. With the connection of more devices and crunching more data than we ever have before, we are moving towards an edge environment. The edge is contributing to a significant shift in the way we are connecting, acquiring information, interacting with it, and making decisions. It's enabling us to expand our reach to a whole new range of equipment and devices and to deliver new operational value and relevant outcomes. In fact, it is said by next year, uh, sorry, 2022, that close to 75% of all the data that we will need to be analyzed and action at the edge. Let's move on to the next slide. So, what is the edge? Traditionally, data has been gathered from our building systems and equipment, had to be routed to the cloud and or to an enterprise in order to be mined for insights. The edge is the means to connect, collect, process data, and take actions at the sensor, controller, and equipment levels, or the device level, rather than in the cloud or the enterprise. Look at it as a, the ability to execute applications traditionally associated with the enterprise or middleware closer to the source itself. Let's move on to the next slide. So, how did it come about? How did we get here? It's being driven by a variety of elements that have merged together. These include the breadth of connectivity options that is now available to us, the volume of data at our disposal, and the increase in real-time requirements. There's also been a shift toward more IP-enabled devices, advances in the power and the smartness of our hardware, such as more capacity, higher levels of data processing, and increased storage capabilities. And there is the reduction in cost in these processors the exponential growth of IT and the in, insignificant, insufficient bandwidth and the movement to a more distributed flat horizontal building architecture that all has also been contributing to this shift to the edge. Let's move on to the next slide. So LinkSpring has defined the edge by a term what we refer to as edge enabled. LinkSpring set out in a journey back in late 2015 to develop and bring to market a portfolio of products and applications under this banner edge enabled. One platform, many IP possibilities. The portfolio includes controllers, modules, gateways, and applications that support IP connectivity, integration, interoperability, data access, and control at the edge. We released the first of our Onyx product line in 2016, which included a BACnet to Haystack data pump, a 4G LTE cellular router, and SkySpark at the edge analytics device. 
in 2017, we released the beginning of our Genesis Edge line of programmable controllers program powered by the Niagara framework. Let's move on to the next slide. So why is the edge important? What are the benefits? There, if we look at it in two distinct areas, a business benefit and then an operational benefit. So from the business perspective, the edge expands our reach to a whole new range of equipment and devices to deliver operational value and new relevant outcomes. It expands our ability to access and analyze data and act on it in real time. The edge, there is speed and the round trip of data to the cloud and back that is eliminated. The edge reduces latency and time to actual actionable insights. The edge conserves network bandwidth and enhances cybersecurity posture. The flexibility and the power at the edge makes it useful in a wide variety of applications and built environments. By offering facility owners and operators an opportunity to improve the use of data and enhance control at the device level, edge devices are an attractive tool for facilities of all shapes and sizes. Now let's move on to the next slide and look at it from an operational perspective. Actions at the device occur when and where they take place. As we've said, faster times to get the data and faster times for response. There's an improved application performance aspect, latency reduction, the ability to scale, and enhance the cybersecurity, eliminates that round trip data send from the, cut, from the device to the cloud and back. Network bandwidth is conserved, there are lower costs, and more data to provide better and more insights. Let's move on to the next slide. So if we look at our portfolio today, LinkSpring's Edge enabled, portfolio. We've got several here uh, that includes the Genesis Edge 534, which is the first ever programmable, fully functional Niagara 4-based IP controller with 34 I.O. built in and universal I.O. expandability. The line has now expanded and it consists of a Genesis Edge 534 4G LTE, which functions as the same as the 534, however, with built-in 4G LTE capabilities. A Genesis Edge 534 Monit, which again has the same base capabilities as a Genesis Edge 534 with the addition of a wireless transceiver and application for connectivity to monit type sensors a genesis edge 514 a, another niagara programmable controller with 14 io on board and coming this summer a, the genesis edge 414 vav a niagara ip based vav controller with built-in integrated differential pressure transducers and 15 additional io and then finally, rounding out this portfolio of edge-enabled products are two extender modules. The Onyx XM34IO, which can extend a Genesis Edge unit, and a Onyx XM34IOB, which we're launching at the end of this month, when compared uh, that allows you to add an additional 34 I.O. to not only the Genesis Edge complete product line, but also to a Genesis PC 8000 controller and any Jace branded 8000 controller. Now, for us to go ahead and look in this, next slide, please, to take a deeper look, I'm going to ask Robert Hirsch or turn it over to Robert Hirsch to kind of give you some additional overviews 
of these products. Robert? Okay, thank you, Mark. I hope everyone can hear me. By the way, Mark is in Virginia. Keneally is off site. I'm in the office, so we're coordinating here. I hope we're doing a good job. Uh, before we start getting into the specific products uh, that actually enable all the edge uh, initiatives that Mark was detailing, uh, it, it is important to understand that LinkSpring really is one, if not the only manufacturer has taken on a business initiative to actually build out a family of edge controls and edge control supporting products to uh, really extend uh, intelligence beyond uh, network area managers, supervisories, uh, and we can also adapt these products as being, you know, standalone products being edge control or edge controllers as controlling equipment, monitoring, or collecting data, or parts of all of it. But I think everybody kind of likes a story before I get started here. The Edge 534, of which, which you see here, has a, a little bit of a colorful background when it started. In 2015, we were um, uh, profiling a uh, what we call an Onyx 534. Onyx is the actual um, product you see here, but without Niagara on it. We were uh, entertaining the idea of creating a onboard IO programmable controller to replace what was soon to become end of life products uh, in the Jace uh, 3, 6, uh, products. We had a lot of uh, success with OEMs and putting uh, JACES with I.O. on equipment and we were being told those were end of life and we wanted to have something to replace those and give our customers an option. Uh, what better than building a, uh, a product that's programmable with I.O. on board, 34 points, which is exactly the same amount of I.O. that's on the um, uh, I.O. module and, uh, and then Lo and behold, in 2015, we were also presented the opportunity to um, port of the full stack of Niagara onto this device. We were more than pleased to take on that opportunity. Now, what we believe we have here, as you see, a 534 it really is a flagship product on our Edge line of Genesis devices. Every Edge device does have Niagara 4 ported to it. It is the real full stack of Niagara. And in this case, we support uh, many of the versions of uh, Niagara 4. Uh, we do also, I would say, if uh, there's a need for some AX, we do have some AX products as well on the Edge 534. One of the common uh, benefits that people realize who are in the Niagara community find that using the Edge products from LinkSpring, the investment to get up to speed on it is very little. Uh, you are using your Niagara tools, your Pro Builder, your Workbench software that you've used or still use on Jace's and Jenny's and Web Supervisors. You use it again on the Edge controller as well. All right. So there's, you know, if you're trained on Niagara and you can work on other products, platforms, you also can work on the Edge product with little um, uh, uh, new training on Niagara. And I will tell you though, because this is an Edge product, this is an embedded Linux device that when using for the first time, you should not take all kinds of uh, assumptions that it's exactly like a Jace. There are some nuances, some characteristics that make it different. And obviously because it's an edge device with onboard IO, it has to be a little bit different. So we invite you whenever you get an opportunity to work with this product to, you know, reach out to LinkSpring. We have a complete support R&D and professional services crew that is willing and, and, and wanting to help you get uh, successful and get on the uh, right step forward as soon as possible. Now this device specifically also, because it is Niagara, because it is the full stack, supports um, all the open protocols, the, the BACnet, the Modbus. It does have web UI interface on board. Uh, it also has the Niagara Fox, which we take advantage of extremely uh, plentiful uh, when, when deploying edge devices. 34 IO, and then uh, like Mark was ending his uh, uh, dissertation on XMs, you can add enough XMs to get up to almost 306 points of physical IO. Of course, that's always limited by in the Niagara world. 
your global capacity license that you're using, right? Let me move on to the next slide, please. So here we go. This is a, a list of the very specific uh, uh, items that identify an Edge 534 from its physical characteristics in a lot of ways. It has 10 digital outputs. These are relay outputs uh, rated for uh, 0.5 amps. There's eight analog outputs. Those range from uh, zero uh, to 10 uh, volt DC uh, uh, signals and 16 universal inputs, which uh, uh, exemplify the same things you would see on a IO34 device using the regular J's. Uh, that was our goal is to keep the characteristics of our IO uh, uh, and represent them the same as uh, someone who's used to using an IO34 or IO16. All right, and then um, they could apply it quickly to an edge device. The edge device also, which is now listed on here, has what's called a uh, Onyx driver or Onyx network, let's say Onyx network. Now, Onyx network is a proprietary network which enables a lot of the IO and enables communication to other XMIO devices. So be aware of that. It's very easy to use. You use the same Ni Niagara tools. There's no other tools. and the uh, experience is exactly the same as you would with NDIO or NRIO. Uh, there is two Ethernet ports, uh, primary and a secondary, a 10 uh, base 100 uh, uh, Ethernet ports. Two RS-485 ports are also available, uh, one mini and one micro USBs. Uh, we support power from 24 volt AC and 24 volt DC. Um, uh, supplies class two supply transformers and uh, also I want to make you aware that this is a full wave rectified device so we want to have st um, uh, standalone or dedicated power supplies for the controller. The uh, unit is also powered by a, 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 a Cortex A8 processor, uh, the flash memory and then of course the installation of the unit is can be DIN rail mounted or sub panel mounted, therefore. Uh, now, because it is a Niagara uh, ported device, it comply, it's compliant with many of the different global capacity licenses. And we also have what's called a driver capacity license as well. But what's maybe different than you haven't seen before if you're not familiar with edges is that there is a 100 point device, there is a 200 point, 300 point all limited by five devices, and then we can uh, quickly move from there to other uh, uh, points and capacities. I will tell you though, you don't want to put an edge device in a situation where it needs to be a, a large building network area manager. It really is suited for edge, just as we talked about. It's good for small buildings, being equipment controllers, uh, plant controllers, interfacing with other uh, devices along the way that uh, make uh, things interoperable with one another. So just keep that in mind. Leverage is global capacity license, which means if you exceed 100 points, you're going to have to get something bigger. So you can add more points and you can add more devices if these, if these uh, initial licenses don't work out for you for whatever reason as your application grows. So that, that's a quick overview of the 534, but again, I want to let you know that the Edge 534 has been around the longest. It has the most uh, burn-in time, and it uh, was a, uh, you know, a, a recipient of uh, a number of things happening, you know, the end of life of other uh, controllers, and then the introduction of Ni portable Niagara. So uh, we're pretty happy with it. Uh, we love this product. Uh, I think our customers love it as well, and it has found itself into up to almost 8,000 instances so far. So we can move on to the next screen, please. Okay, moving on, we got 534. This is the same device, but uh, what I uh, wanted, I didn't mention earlier is that within internal to that device, it's very scalable. Uh, there are slots within the device itself that enable us to add uh, what we call micro uh, uh, PCBs that uh, represent different things. In this case, we have uh, we utilize one of those option slots internal with the controller to um, have it receive a transceiver from uh, Monit. 
Monit is a, a very well-known uh, sensor manufacturer of wireless devices, wireless sensors, 900 megahertz is the frequency used. They have a huge portfolio of uh, wireless sensors as well. We have successfully married their transceiver into the 534. And basically we've made now a Niagara programmable edge controller interoperable on one device with Monit sensors. It's really cool because uh, traditionally you need to you leverage um, a separate gateway possibly and a, a separate uh, uh, access point uh, in a cloud situation in order to take advantage of the Monit sensors. We think what we've done is take the best of Monit and the best of Edge and combine them and now you have on board local if you want to keep it local wireless capability and sensors or you can obviously the edge has full capability of, of pushing data to uh, other entities as you see fit uh, again this product is no different than the previous 534 I said that we talked about it just has the the uh, monitor op options on it and uh, there's a whole list of sensors if we go on to the next uh, slide please Uh, right now, we're supporting a number of devices. Keep in mind, from a technical perspective, uh, and this is a Niagara device, we have to represent every, you know, the sensors that we want to support within a Niagara uh, uh, profile, we'll call it. And so far, this is what we've done. We have basically, in every case, there's three versions of each one of those, uh, and they use all the Alta sensors which is the gen 2 the latest generation of sensors which have very high uh, 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 ranges and longevities so when you look at these you see uh, a button press sensor that was we believe uh, necessary to test your installation and as you go through there's other sensors as well uh, can you move to the next slide please okay so a little bit more information using, uh, go back up to the slide before, is this the next one? All right, I just wanted to uh, expand on this a little bit. Uh, so monitor, the application of monitor sensors, and let's just call them wireless sensors at this, at this juncture. You can apply wireless sensors using that, uh, the Genesis Edge product, which is really neat. You probably have, applications that you think that you believe that this would be beneficial to you right now uh, obviously you know difficult places to wear places that you don't want to have a permanent solution you just want to get some data logging things like that uh, and remember too we believe that it supports this idea that we have with edge as a horizontal ip architecture because it is embedded within the edge 534 and interoperable uh, together it's one homogenous device all right, we can move to the next screen, please. Okay, some of the characteristics for just the sensors themselves and how we've uh, adopted them. You know, these sensors are rated in uh, in pretty good uh, situations, 1,200 feet. Obviously, if you, anybody's uh, familiar with wireless, that range might shorten itself if you have more obstructions or more uh, high uh, frequency uh, interruptions going on there. Uh, 12 walls, so uh, the last uh, customer that we spoke to, he had a large concrete wall that he did not want to pipe a, a hardwired sensor in. He was successful in using using this um, uh, device. It saved him a lot of installation time. Uh, the, uh, the battery sets on here, so in best cases, you have 12 years of life using a AA battery. Uh, and then using again the Niagara framework with the Genesis 534. It, if you're familiar with Niagara, you're doing a discovery, you're adding the points, you're integrating them into your wire sheet, you're creating logic or you're creating alarms and alerts and things like that using Niagara in the way that you're familiar with using Niagara. It's just another product that needs to be integrated uh, when you add sensors to it. Okay, so we'll move on to the next slide, please. So again, because it's Edge 534, it's, it supports uh, all these license uh, points and devices, and it's uh, limited by the capacity 
features that are in those licenses. But again, remember it's full Niagara on board. It's just limited by the licenses, right? Okay, let's move on to the next one, please. All right, here we go. 530, Edge 534 with a 4G LTE modem. This product is uh, really new. Uh, the Edge 534 is not new, as you know, but having an onboard 4G modem is something that's just really been released uh, literally weeks ago. Uh, we've been working on this for quite some time. Uh, and if you guys are familiar with LinkSpring, you know that we have what's called an Onyx 4G router. And really we're uh, taking the same characteristics that, uh, that is on a standalone router on the Onyx brand and putting it on an Edge brand. Uh, so now you, we've, again, because of its scalability, the Edge 534 and the 4G modem have been integrated to have one homogenous device that does everything Niagara, everything IO, integrations that you custom to, and now we have a 4G modem in it as well. Uh, with the modem, uh, of course, we have other features such as a VPN that uh, you can participate in as well. Next, please. Okay, as you see here, what's what? What I really want to highlight here, so it's a it's a it's a modem slash router on the on the edge device. You can access the product. You can port forward into and tunnel to other devices that are connected to the edge product. Okay, and it does have bi-directional communication. You can set this up so it can share data. Uh, I'll port from the location of the edge and put it in or um, have it uh, directed at a at a um, database someplace or another application that requires a database third-party application we use a lot of those these days so it's fully functional what i like about it the most from a user's perspective when i when i've traditionally bought 4g modems uh, i would have to you know, get the uh, get the card and uh, enable it on a, um, on a service provider's account or my customer's account when you order this from LinkSpring, it's working. You just simply give it uh, uh, power up. That modem's already working. You're going to get immediate access to that device, and so the setup and the engagement of the 4G service and enabling its uh, service locally is uh, very easy. All right, let's move forward. Okay, as you can imagine, what what is the benefits of uh, having a 4G cellular router? Well, we can see here that you know, standalone, we can put on a piece of equipment, monitor and access the equipment, and, and maintain it, and things like that. And that's with anything as well, multiple pieces of equipment that are tied together, integrated with one another. It can support that as long as the Edge 534 can uh, communicate to things. Uh, you should be able to access it through the 4G option. Uh, one thing that uh, we found that we're getting a little bit more um, call for our 4G products is that this whole pandemic that's come on, people are being locked out of their buildings. Having a 4G device there does enable us to be able to maintain and, and have some access to systems that were maybe responsible for um, the operation thereof. Okay, let's move forward. All right, so the modem is very special. You need to know, understand that the modem has been uh, scrutinized, certified uh, by uh, the entities that are needed to be involved, FCC. Uh, it is a Verizon-based uh, modem at this juncture. Uh, the brand is NimbleLink Skywire, if you're interested in looking at that. But it is embedded in our device. We have a close relationship with that vendor. They've done all the heavy lifting on getting the the modem certified and, and, uh, and developed under the scrutiny of uh, FCC and everyone else. So it is literally a small little chip with, with some wires to connect to a PCB and uh, that's how it's uh, 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 assembled. And at the low power requirements, I had some of that written down. Uh, it uh, literally takes 66 milliamps on average the upload and download speeds or the download and upload speeds is uh, respectfully 150 megabyte and 50 megabyte each. 
All right, so can we move forward to the next slide? Okay, this uh, extends a little, we provide with the Edge 534, and obviously if you've used our Onyx uh, um, router, you're familiar with this, but we have what's called a virtual private network surrounding the cellular service. It's presented to us, provided by us in Verizon because this is a Verizon modem. Uh, what that does is gives you a, a, another layer of security uh, to access your modem. So it's really a two tier uh, type access into the product itself. The plan itself is very easy to engage in. You'll, you'll enter it into it one time and then you add modems to it. So it's an aggregated plan. Uh, if you buy one modem uh, and want to get it set up, it you automatically have one gigabyte of data uh, available to you. If you want to add a second modem, that same plan, the same one gigabyte of data per month is available to both modems and thus more modems as you add them on. So you're not adding more costs for data uh, usage and such. There are incremental upgrades to different uh, plans if you end up using more data than you, than, than you had previously. So that just happens automatically. You, you don't get um, uh, penalized for going over. So there's no overages. So as you can see, it's a, it's a, it adjusts itself. So anything over a gig, what was a gig? Uh, a gig and less is like $25 per month for as many modems that can fit in that one gig. Go over that one gig, then a gig after that costs $20 per month. And as you can go, uh, so you can see how this kind of scales and it's easy to work with and you get access to the performance of your product as well through, through interfaces. All right. We're moving on. Okay. Da, da, da. Again, uh, kind of repeating ourselves here, but it's 4G LT, just to remind you that. Uh, Verizon is a huge in, uh, in America, of course. So it's uh, basically its uh, service area is almost everywhere. Uh, and they're great to work with. That's why we've chosen those. Others have asked, well, can you do ATT? Can you do others? The answer is yes. It just right now, what our provided service is through Verizon. The capability of the edge controller is, a, is immense, as you can, as I try to um, convey earlier, it's scalable. So can we put an ATT modem on it? Yes. Uh, can we put a T-Mobile modem on it? Yes. Right now, our service that we offer is, is a Verizon uh, service. <clears throat> and if you have an opportunity or need, uh, please contact us anytime. We'll, we'll work with you. We've made this thing work on almost every uh, uh, service provider's network that is out there, including uh, international. So if we move forward to the next slide, please. So again, it's a Genesis Edge 534. It just, just happens to have 4G modems on it. Uh, and the licensing is the licensing uh, repeated from before. It's the same thing. So the same Niagara, same licensing, so on and so forth. So we beat the 534 to, I won't say to death, but we beat it up a little bit. Uh, probably more questions than, uh, than uh, real answers maybe. So please uh, reach out to us uh, with your questions. Uh, now I'd like to introduce the Edge 514. All right, this looks similar to the Edge 534. Uh, what is different about it is really uh, very little. The, the biggest changes to the Edge 514 versus 534, it is its I.O. capacity. It has 14 points of I.O. rather than 34. That's pretty up. And it's a smaller um, footprint. So it can fit in smaller panels, smaller applications, where it, it, and it's really suited for equipment controller. Uh, so if you have a small location for this to fit, it can fit in there. Now it can be, because it is the Niagara controller, it can be a client, it can be a slate to BACnet or to Modbus, so on and so forth. But it also has the full capacity of Niagara and using Fox as a protocol if you have an IP network, okay? And then again, because it is an edge device and it does have an Onyx network, this IO is expandable using our XM extension module, modules as well. So we'll go to the next screen, please. Uh, here's the specifics of the points. There's four digital outputs, the same specifications, 534. 
the analogs for those six universal inputs, they represent are represented by the exact same specifications as the 534. So literally, it's a 534 cut down into about maybe two thirds. Um, it has the Ethernet ports, it has the RS-45 ports, the USB ports, the same power uh, uh, requirements and and uh, the same what we call, and I didn't mention this earlier, but what we have internal to it is a link spring smart module. So it, it, it encapsulates the uh, Cortex uh, processor, flash memory, and uh, also is where Niagara resides. All right, next. Please. Okay. I will tell you, uh, the H514, though, because of its smaller size and its intended application, we do limit its, its uh, licensing capacity to these three uh, functions. So if you, you start getting uh, bigger than this, uh, we start to think that, hey, you're getting into applications that might require uh, something a little bit more juice, maybe in the 534 or maybe even a larger. Uh, Jenny PC8000. So uh, the licenses are limited to 100, 250, 300 points in five devices. Of course, those can be extended uh, by optional add ons. Okay, moving forward. All right, uh, Edge, Genesis Edge 414 VAV. Let's move on to that, please. Okay, when you look at this device, you're going, hey, that looks just like a 514, and you're you're really correct. It is the exact same physical uh, uh, structure. Internally, though, it, it's a little bit different. Uh, in a VAV, uh, we do carry a differential pressure transducer as well. It's a zero to two inch of water column uh, transducer. Well suited for VAV applications, that's for sure. Uh, it's getting a lot of attention. Uh, we are. Uh, We've been soft rolling it out to some um, early adopters over the last six months and getting some really good feedback. And uh, understandably, we, it's a uh, high volume product, so we want to get uh, everything in place before full production is required. Um, again, I will like that second paragraph, it that blends the adaptability and flexibility of freely IP programmable device. And it's, it, it, it engages that idea that marketable idea that sales uh, leverage that you may need to profess a horizontal architecture. And in this case, it's a horizontal architecture from edge to enterprise using Niagara-based controllers and IP communications. It, it's, it's pretty uh, uh, market changing in my opinion. Next please. So a little bit uh, to understand about the, um, the VAV controller itself is that it uh, can be daisy chained using this uh, spanning tree protocol. Uh, each uh, daisy chain is limited up to 25 controllers per loop, we call that. Uh, one end connects to a uh, edge gateway and the other end connects to the edge gateway, right? So we have communication back and forth through that loop over 25 controllers. Uh, it's commissioned, licensed, and loaded with a configurable station. Right now, LinkSpring provides it from the factory with up to 15 uh, VAV sequences of operation. What's interesting too, we made a decision to base our sequence of operations on the new um, uh, guidelines from ASHRAE there, the uh, 36 guidelines. They have a tremendous amount of detail about VAV sequences, including how to, uh, VAV inter interoperable in, is interoperable with a VAV air handler. Okay, so we're taking advantage of that, proofing it for the future. Here's a sample of some of the VAV uh, sequences that we have in place. Obviously, the application itself is, is uh, as um, uh, user-friendly as we want it. We, we didn't want you to have to build your own application, uh, but rather just configure our application. And so there's a, a pretty significant uh, user interface, a graphical user interface that you use to um, uh, make some of those changes and select your sequences that you need. And I'll get, I'll expand on that a little bit further. Uh, because these are small application specific controllers, they're 
they have a perpetual Niagara software maintenance, so you don't have to buy maintenance for every year. It comes with the original license, which is 50 points and three devices. Something that's very important for customers to understand about Edge 414 in general is that it's identified by its license. And that license is that it's limited to 50 points and three devices. That license cannot be upgraded in the field. The intention from uh, Tritium and LinkSpring is to place the controller in the applications it's uh, uh, priced to fit into. So we try our best to uh, limit uh, the, its application because the cost is, uh, we're trying, trying to drive costs out of these products so that they become more advantageous and applicable for your situation. But guess what? Again, this is a Niagara device. You can actually use this as a fully programmable Niagara device, just like you would with anything else. It has the full stack of Niagara in it. The edge tools that are here listed on the bottom, we find that because the Edge 414 VAB, there's a lot of interest in it. And I tell you, it's, it's not a simple, simple VAB controller. It's a fully programmable Niagara controller, in fact. But how do we drive value into this product? We've created a set of tools. One, is, uh, and here's five of them listed. When you receive an Edge 414 VAV and you apply it to the system that we promote using spanning tree, using a commissioning tool or a, a supervisory tool as well, you will receive a configuration tool set. The configuration tool set is, is just like, uh, well, it's analogous to a VAV schedule that anybody has to use to understand where VAVs are uh, applied in, in their locations. And Mark, I'm gonna move a little bit more quickly here. But the tool set is, uh, enables the user to quickly configure each and every unit that's on a, on a bus. So you're not individually got, touching every VAV controller and configuring it. The tool that we give you will go out there and find the individual devices and configure them the way they need be. So you may have five cooling only, you may have five units with electric reheat and some other things. The configuration tool identifies those properly and creates the uh, configuration as they need. They set the set points, the min and max, uh, temperature set points and, and uh, flows, uh, puts in the K factor required, so on and so forth. There's a balancing tool. So we wanna make this easy for balancers to uh, get in there and make adjustments as quick, quickly as possible. Uh, actually, in all cases, we our goal is to make these tools easier to use than anything that's out there in the market and make the installation and the, including the, the um, configuration, the balancing and commissioning of these devices easier and quicker than other devices that are out there. So continuous commissioning is a feature set that is included. Uh, IP addressing of the units. So imagine if you got to go in there and, and individually um, address uh, these units can be a little, um, uh, I guess, uh, a little bit of work. Uh, our tool will eliminate and auto automate that process. And then we wanna have a, because these are IP controllers and so many reasons, that's why the value is there. Uh, we need to be able to continually uh, provision and remediate these products when, when, when needed. So a customer can go through the supervisory uh, product and upgrade these units to the new thing. Maybe there's a patch in Linux, maybe because the IT departments can be looking. They want to keep these things up to date. So this is a living product that will should be able to be maintained throughout uh, its life cycle and keep it up to up to date with the latest versions of Niagara and anything else that you load on the product. All right, let's move to the next one. Okay, quickly I'm gonna go through uh, Onyx. Onyx, like I said, is uh, products that do not have Niagara, but they are. They um, contribute to the Genesis products, the Genesis Edge products. Onyx XM is simply a, uh, a shell of an Edge 534, which has the same I.O. However, it communicates to the Edge device through its Onyx network. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you may uh, recall, there is an Onyx network, which, which is a proprietary CAN bus uh, communicating network, and it uh, enables an additional 34 points of I.O. All right, so we extend those. You can have up to seven, eight, or possibly even nine of those 
depending, and of course being limited by your global capacity licenses that um, um, uh, limit the number of um, points and such. But this is an Onyx product. It's not a, uh, so it goes against our uh, driver capacity and the Onyx is a driver. All right. So you can have additional I.O. past the 34, for example, you can change it to 68 pretty quickly uh, and pretty easily using Onyx uh, XM34. All right, let's move to the next one. Here's the new product, Onyx XM34 I.O. Dash B. Uh, this product is not released yet. It's got a release date of, I believe, next week. Uh, I think he says next month, but uh, we'll see. In the next couple of days, we're just finishing up some details and documentation. The product is an extension that enables I.O. Uh, device to be an Onyx device, which is BACnet based, all right? The previous XM34 was Onyx based or uh, Onyx driver based. This one's a BACnet driver based unit. So what the main uh, concept here is to be able to extend I.O. from an edge device or, or a Jenny device, Jace device, beyond 30 feet, all right? It takes, uh, it, it, it takes on the specifications of the EIA uh, 485 specs, so you can uh, treat it just like any other BACnet slave device uh, being integrated into a 534, 514, and so on and so forth. Also, PC-8000s or Jace 8000s uh, uh, J8s uh, can utilize the Onyx XMB as a slave backend device to extend I.O. to locations that can't be reached by other controllers or maybe the XM34. All right, it's pretty cool. Uh, moving to the next slide, I think this might be it for me. Get it close. All right. So again, the XM34B is a backend device. You got to understand that that's the most important part. It doesn't uh, allow you to extend the I.O. further distances away from the edge device or the Jace uh, device. Um, it does have the 34 points. Again, exactly the same type of point structure as at Edge 534, 10 digital outputs, 8 analog outputs, 16 universal inputs. And uh, again, like that bottom line says, the XM, sans the B, is a Onyx proprietary driven I.O. Uh, and that goes up to 30 feet. When you need to go beyond 30 feet, you can use the XMB. All right. So going on to the next slide. And the 34ILB. Uh, really, if you know how to integrate uh, BACnet devices, uh, you know how to integrate XM34B. There is an interface uh, with the X34ILB. It's very simple. It identifies points for you. Uh, there's a user guide that will be that's presented to you that you can use pretty quickly uh, in setting up particular uh, points on a on the device itself. All right, and that's it for me. If you got any questions, uh, please email us. Uh, I'll hand it over to Mark. Great, thanks, Robert, and. Uh... Again, part of this edge-enabled portfolio, not only does it include the hardware and um, application, it includes applications, uh, what we have defined as edge-centric applications or ECAs. And simply put, ECAs are a series of pre-configured, pre easy-to-use, interchangeable plug-in equipment applications that have been created by us and ready for you to use on Genesis Edge 534s, uh, our, our main programmable controller. Uh, next slide, please. So if we look at them, uh, they work on our Genesis Edge 534 now. Uh, we are got some things uh, in, the, in the works now to work on uh, some of the other 514 units and things like that. It leverages the Niagara programming tools. And basically, it's 80% complete. You just use your Pro Builder or standard workbench to complete it. And that last 20% is customizable. So you can make it customizable to your particular situation, your particular application. Um, 
it unifies point names. And one thing to be cautioned about, it does not, these ECAs are not uh, workable on the Genesis PC 8000s. Some of the, the benefits, uh, applications built with Niagara continued, decreases engineering time, reduces your setup and overall install and operational cost, and you still retain the ability to put your personal, your finishing touches on it. So let's move on. So right now we have four available and they're listed here. You can see them. Um, uh, a DX uh, handling unit and so forth and so on. And moving on because of time. Uh, in development, which we hope to uh, have in available uh, in the next several months, is a 534 small building application with Viconic thermostats, 514 water source heat pump, and a 514-414 fan coil units with and without uh, an ECA motor. All right, moving on. And so you've seen the products and solutions of the edge-enabled portfolio. Individually, they bring new value, new benefits to the marketplace. But let's look at them collectively. Robert mentioned this. Utilizing this collective portfolio, we now can create a horizontal Niagara IP architecture. It has given us the ability to change the traditional vertical building typology and architecture to one which is horizontal. And as you can see here, you still have a Niagara soup. Uh, you have Jace or Jenny controllers for lighting, HVAC, area supervisor. You've got the new edge devices as primary equipment control uh, and so forth and so on. And unitary equipment control, the VAV, the Monit wireless sensor. So all of this allows this whole new architecture and again, the key is it's, it's horizontal and it's IP and Niagara driven. Let's move on. So a list of various um, benefits, including one single unified software platform, IP based peer to peer between the devices, IP, a secure IP network, enhanced security at the device level, which again uh, fits into the overall model of the edge-enabled portfolio, uh, supports legacy BAS drives, drivers, and so forth and so on, peer-to-peer -peer communication. So there is a lot of benefits and a lot of value that an IP architecture can bring. So as we get fin as we finalize this, um, I want to just leave you with a couple things. So the edge is becoming an integral part of many organizations building operational strategies. We are connecting many more devices and crunching much more data more quickly than ever before. Adoption of edge technologies ensures a much greater degree of flexibility for the future integration of new systems and applications within the built environment and reduces overall operational cost and the time required for installation. So with that, uh, we're at the end of our uh, webinar. I have one question that has come through. Uh, and that question is, does the edge replace the cloud? Wow, very good question. Uh, our answer, the edge does not, let me repeat, does not replace the cloud but rather complements it. It brings more efficiency, flexibility, security, and simplicity to the overall effort. It ensures that the data resulting from equipment in the devices truly is the best you can get, and the conclusions derived that can be acted upon are the most optimal in the, in the time frame. So ideally, you can process and utilize the data and the analytics at the edge and then send what you need up to a cloud or to an enterprise. And um, with that, 
If there are no more questions, we want to thank you very much. Uh, offer our sincere wishes to continue to be safe. And we appreciate your time and effort today. And thank you and talk to you soon.